Right, afternoon all. I'm just going to do a quick review of the new tent I've got myself. In order to cut down my backpack weight, I've got myself the big Agadis HV Ultra Light 2. It's a two person lightweight backpacking tent, including everything the footprint, poles, pegs. We're looking at just under one and a half kilos, so that should help me lessen the load in my backpack. Um, this is the footprint, which I'd highly recommend because it's a sill nylon tent and the base of it is extremely thin and therefore vulnerable to spikes, sticks, etc. So if you use the footprint, it's going to prolong the life of your tent. So what I'm going to do first of all is put the footprint out and we'll see how that goes. This footprint actually retails at around about £70 I think, but I actually got it thrown in with the price of the tent from a company called Elite Mountain Supplies. So it wasn't too bad a deal. It's all colour coded, you can see it's got red tabs on one end, grey tabs on the other, and that's just basically where your, your, um, your tent frame and your rain fly connects to. It's got a top and a bottom, the seams as far as I'm aware are upwards, so you're basing the tent sits on them. So let's get this laid out. These are the pegs that come with the tent. I've actually chucked, chucked an extra couple in there. You'll see later on why you need them. So we need four for the footprint. Now we'll go as simple as that, that's it, ready for the tent to go on top. So we'll move on and do that step next. Right, the next thing you do is to get the poles attached to the ground sheet. Actually, one of the another, another benefit of buying the ground sheet, it means if it's raining, having the ground sheet allows you to pitch this out at first, so it stops the inner tent from getting wet. There's actually two poles. This is a little pole that just goes across the top to raise the roof of the tent. And this main pole all comes as one piece. Set together. Said earlier it's colour coded so we'll grey to grey, red to red. So let's get this put in. That's the main frame set up. So we'll just get the um, inner tent and get that attached to the frame. Extremely lightweight, extremely thin, which is great for keeping your loads down when you're out backpacking.
in this pole here, it just goes across the top. And what you've actually got, you've got these two little plastic loops where the end pushes into. Have This final clip clips on the top. Right, that's the inner tent pitched. As you can see, it just clips in and the corners into the loops like most tents do. And these clips here are where the um, rain fly clips in do. Pretty sturdy. These are the clips that raise the roof, which gives you great headroom inside. It's nice weather, summertime. You can actually just pitch this by itself if you're not expecting any rain. But what we'll do now, we'll go ahead and we'll put the rain fly on just to see how easy that goes. Again, it's all colour coded, red to red, grey to grey, pretty foolproof. Right, here it goes. Right, we just need to peg out the porch now. Or the vestibule, whatever you want to call it. Right, that's the rain fly attached and the vestibule's pegged out. As you can see, it's a pretty simple procedure, just red clip the red clip, grey clip the grey clip. I can adjust these a little bit just to improve the tension. Right, what I'll just do now is open the front door, or back door, depending on which way you put it around, it doesn't make any difference. Door tied up, so it's not Right, that's that. I'll just give you a quick look in the tent inside. Oh. As you can see, it's extremely spacious. Lots of headroom. Got all that space above my head. You can probably get your, your, your what, the, what they call those inflatable you know, those chairs that you put onto your inflatable mat and sit in one of them is nice and cosy. This inner door, you can either tie it up on the proper loop or if you're just in a hurry, you can just stuff it into that loop there. And that keeps that out of the way. So you a lovely vestibule there for cooking, etc. And there's also one on the other side as well. So you can keep your bag in there, your boots, do your bit of cooking in there, etc. So, like I said before, this is the base and it is very thin. So, 
I highly recommend getting that um, footprint just to make your base last a little bit longer. But all in all, I think it's quite an easy pitch. It's extremely lightweight and I'm going to give it a try on uh, Saturday night coming up in the Cheviot Hills. So we'll get a better look at it then out in its proper environment. One thing I'm going to show you quickly with this porch is how you can actually make this little bit of a shelter should it be raining etc. I'll just go and grab my walking poles and show you that. Right, I've just uh, grabbed my walking poles and put them in there to show you how the porch works. You've got two pairs of walking poles with you. You can have one of these on each side. As you can see, it makes a great spot for socialising or cooking. Could easily get your stove in there as long as you haven't got the flame too high. So let's have a look back outside. There you go, the poles are just guide down to lift that porch up. By the way, you don't get enough poles, uh, enough pegs, sorry, to use your poles. So you've got to bring some extra pegs with you. And also, you don't get enough pegs for these additional guy lines. You only give you the pegs for each corner, and these ones here at the head and foot of the tent, which I omitted to put on earlier. There's plenty of guy out points should the weather turn a little bit ropey. And like I said, it's a three season tent. Hence, here we've got this big gap underneath, which you wouldn't have on a four season tent. But what that's great for is um, ventilation. And speaking of ventilation, we do have this nice little bit on the roof where you can velcro that on to give you a nice airflow through there. A big gap that. What you do get with the tent is you get another couple of guy lines. Like I say, you don't really get enough pegs. You should put a few more pegs in, and you get this pole repair, which you don't get any tape, so you need to carry a roll of uh, gaffer tape or electrician's tape just in case you need to use that at some point. So, first impressions, first pitch. I'm quite impressed with it. Like I say, I'll get out on Saturday night and use it. Quick look back inside. Oof. You've got ample pockets, you've got here for clothes etc. And look at these, that's where you put the cables through. If you've got your phone charging or some music playing etc. Massive nut at this side. And you've also got little door pockets in the doors here as well. All in all, very good tent. Right, that's my first pitch of my Big Agnes. Reminds me of a girl I once knew, a copper spur, ultra light tent. As I say, just under one and a half kilos, fully laden. So excellent if you want to lessen the load when you're out backpacking, etc. I'm going to give a try at the Chibi on Saturday night and uh, I'll do a video then and I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, not a bad price this tent, actually, as I say, it's three season and I've got this, including the ground sheet, for £440 from Elite Mountain Supplies. But they had a special offer on where they're throwing in the ground sheet with the price of the tent. So thanks, Elite Mountain Supplies. I'll uh, give you guys a shout out on the video when I do the, the camp on Saturday night. Right, brilliant. As always, guys, thanks very much for watching. If you like the video, please click on like and please subscribe to my channel. See you next time. Bye.